morning, St. John Lutheran Church. Welcome to worship. Welcome to everybody who's participating in worship by way of the live stream as well, and those who are watching the recording at a later time. Uh, for those who are participating in worship by way of the live stream, you are welcomed and encouraged to join with the congregation as we receive the Lord's Supper. If you're watching the recording at a later time, I would ask that you refrain from receiving the sacrament. If you would like to receive it, I invite you to either attend worship in person, tune into the live stream, or let me know, and I'll be happy to bring it to you. As we gather today, I also want to mention that we'll have an opportunity uh, in our gathering this morning to lift up our prayers. Do we have any prayer requests this morning? Mark? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> any of Jessica? For Al, For Al Yes. So Al, a member of the congregation, uh, had surgery uh, earlier this week, and uh, Al, I'm guessing that you might be watching the live stream or the recording, so blessings to you as you recover, as you recover, excuse me. Kirsten. Indeed. And may they avoid all of the conspiracy theorists, yes? Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, anybody else? Yes, Mick. Oh, Lord have mercy. Thank you, Mick. Any more? Yes, Ella. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. And her name, Ella? Alice. Alice. Thank you, Ella. Any others? Yes, Pat. Oh, Lord have mercy. Kristen? Any others? All right. For those who are participating in worship by way of the live stream, you can text your prayer request to me. The number is 920-288-2219. Please get your prayer request to me by the hymn of the day. If it's after that, I may not be able to include them in our gathering, but I will hold your prayers in my personal prayer life. With that, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship.
Please rise. Our worship continues with our order of thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Thine is the Glory. be seated. I'd like to have the children of the congregation come forward for just a bit. Good morning, everybody. Come on up. Come on up. How are y'all doing? Wow, it's great to see all of you. Did y'all have a, did y'all have a fun Easter? Yeah? Yeah, what was one of your favorite things about Easter? Yep. Did, no? Finding your basket, very nice. Very nice, very nice. Brantley, geese chasing you would not be high on my list. No, they're terrifying. But if you had fun with it, very good. How about you, Sage? I, I was thinking you were going to say when geese were chasing Brantley. But, you know, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm glad, glad you liked that. All right, yep, John. Very nice, wonderful. It, Easter is a really amazing holiday. It is such a fun time of new life. Uh, we, we get these treats, we get geese chasing us. Uh, you know, the weather was actually pretty good for like a day-ish, kind of, you know. And uh, 
Shame it's over, huh? It's not over. It's not over. See, that's the thing. What Jesus did on Easter, how he came back from the dead, we can't go back after that. Um, for the next few weeks in church, we are actually celebrating Easter not just as a day, but as a whole season. And we are going to move on from that season in our life together and the way we worship. But the truth is, is we live as Easter people. We can't not live Easter life because that's what Jesus has given us. Everything about who we are is as children of Jesus' resurrection. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You know what's kind of sad about that, though? All of the Easter candy in the store is gone. So if we're going to celebrate Easter, I probably would have had to go earlier in the week to get us more Easter candy, huh? Do you think I did that? <laughs> think again, Brantley. <laughs> it is still Easter. And to help us remember that, I hope you like Twix, because that's about all they had left. All right? So, Cooper didn't come up. Should he get one? Yeah, there we go. Give one to Cooper, okay? All right. There you go. All right. Oh, did so? Yeah, uh huh. I see how it is, Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul. There we go. There you go, Sage. Here you go, Alex. No Ian today? Will it... No, oh, Ian, sorry. I, don't ex I often don't expect you to be a front row guest here. That's pretty cool. All right. And uh, Lucas, uh, Lucas and Wyatt need them? Will it make it home to them? All right. Okay. So I hope that you guys remember that Easter isn't just a one-day thing. It's how we live our life. It's a gift that Jesus gave us that's never, ever, ever going to go away. One last thing about the candy. Pastor Josh's rule is that you can have that when the grown-ups you came with say you can. Okay? So whether that is during worship or later, it's up to them. Okay? But you guys are going to head off to Sunday school first. And uh, before you do that, we're going to say a word of prayer. All right? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for making us Easter people. Thank you for making that our identity. Help us to remember your promises of love and new life are forever and always. And help us to share those promises with everyone we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. If you want to take your candy back to your grown-ups before you head off to Sunday school, that'd be cool too, okay? Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to the entire world. Send us into the world to bear witness to all you have done in our lives. Amen. Please join me in reading our psalm responsively. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our kings. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Glory to, uh, in the first book, the- Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, He ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it's not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, and as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why, Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, Philip, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you this morning from our triune God. Amen. So last week, as we looked at the very tail end of the Gospel of Mark, I had us think about the way that he ended that in terms of the way that he began it. And today, we've got a writing from a different evangelist, but I kind of want us to think about the reading in the same way. Okay, so last week... uh, I will spare you the bad Winston Churchill impression, right? But last week said, this isn't the end. It may not even be the beginning of the end, but it may perhaps be the end of the beginning. 
Today, we've got a different evangelist. Uh, The church throughout the ages has referred to this evangelist as Luke. It's as good of a guess as any. Um, And we've got another story here. The way that Luke begins this volume says, In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning. That was the first book. Now, I don't really know how it works in terms of Churchill's quote. Uh, You know, the, the Gospel of Luke has ended... This is not really the end of the... I don't know. But it makes sense for us to think about beginnings today and endings. The story of what Jesus has done through his life, through the crucifixion and through the resurrection, according to the way that Luke starts this one, that time is done. He wrote an entire book of all that Jesus did, all that he taught. All of the miracles. And that book ended with Jesus being taken up into heaven. Now, what's interesting about this, I think, is he writes, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day. It's almost like including that phrase, Luke is saying that this book that we are going to be looking at for a couple of weeks at least you know, about that much of our Bible. This book appears to be what Jesus did after he was taken up into heaven. That's the story of the book of Acts. The book of Acts is about what Jesus does after he ascended into heaven through the apostles, through his followers who are still here on earth, through regular folks like you and me. The story of Acts is not just about the apostles. It is the story of Jesus living, working in the world through the church that the Holy Spirit creates. That is pretty amazing stuff. I think about that, and I think about this other line always gets me every time I read it. As they saw Jesus ascending into heaven. Where did it go? (laughs) I'm right there. As they were watching, Jesus was lifted up. A cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This is not a time as the church, as the people who live a resurrection life. It is not the time for us to just stand idly by, looking up, waiting for Jesus to come back. It is not a time for us even really to be looking out in the world for signs that he is coming back. He's told us that there's going to be all of these things happening in the world, but not even the sun knows the day or the hour. Our work Our lives as followers of Jesus, as followers who are now called to share his life, to share his love, to share his grace, is to go out and be witnesses, to go out and bear witness to what he has done. And in doing that, in doing that, we continue the work of Jesus Christ. The resurrection life that Jesus has The resurrection that Jesus Christ wants to give to our neighbors is going to come through you and me. That's the story of the church as we continue. And I got to warn you, 
we will face the same, the, the same conflict, the same struggles that Jesus faced. When Jesus wanted to bring good news to the world, there were people that stood in opposition to him because this world does not deal well with mercy and grace and love and kindness. This world fights back against those things so much that this world has nailed Jesus to a cross. We will experience difficulties as well. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to take a toll on us as individuals and as the body of Christ. But still, still Jesus promises to give us his resurrection so that we can then go and share it with others in everything that we do. We don't need to look up. We need to look out. Because this world, this world needs the gifts of Jesus Christ that have been placed into our hands to share with our neighbors so that we can raise them to new life as well. Thanks be to God. Let's rise and sing our hymn of the day. Come share the Spirit. Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith and use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He is centered into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O God, and you listen. As you drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit that our faith is renewed and that we can be your witnesses to all the earth. Give us your gifts, gracious God, to go, to go and be your story in the world, to go and be living representatives of your good news. God of grace, your creation cries out, O God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, your world cries out, O God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may need to live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for an end to racism and other oppression, for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering and pain. We pray for those in need of your gracious healing. We lift up Sandy, Catherine, John, Jasmine, Lois, Isla, Dan, Heidi, Dale, Judine, Mary, Terry, Nancy, Chuck, Jeanette, and Al. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, all staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. God, we cry out and trust that you listen. Draw near to our loved ones that we lift up in prayer. We pray for healing for Karen, Lannis, NJ, Daryl. We pray for your presence with Kristen and her little one during her difficult pregnancy. We pray that you would draw near to Alice. We hope for positive test results. We pray that you would draw near to Bob's family and friends as they grieve. Give them the power of your resurrection in their lives just as you grant new life to Bob. Bring new life to places of conflict and war in our world. We pray for the people of Palestine and Israel for the people of Ukraine. We pray too for those who are traveling this week for the eclipse. Make it a blessed time of discovery for them. Give them safe travel and joyful homecomings. God of grace, accept our gratitude, O God, for, those, for the lives of those who now rest in you. This week we especially lift in prayer Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and all whose lives have been given in faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let's share a sign of that peace with one another. Our worship continues with the offering. As the grains of wheat once Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and to bear fruit. May the gifts we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death, and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. 
heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us be bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As we gather around Christ's table, a word of instruction for those who are participating in worship by way of the live stream. As we share the gifts of bread and wine, I invite you to share these words with one another. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you're worshiping by yourself, know that you gather with the whole body of Christ and hear these words of promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you don't receive the sacrament, know that the promises are for you as well, that Jesus has given his life for you and he loves you very much. For those of us who are present here, we will receive the Lord's Supper by table. I invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers. All is ready, all are welcome, and all means all. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. We'll go to this one. How's that? The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Please be seated. And just a couple of quick announcements uh, this morning. First of all, uh, for anybody that needs to turn in pizza order forms or needs to order pizzas yet, uh, today is the last day. So if you have not ordered pizzas, please get those in. Uh, if you forgot your form, uh, please get that to me as soon as possible. Uh, you can even text me a picture of it when you get home today. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, secondly, uh, we have our next meeting tonight for our youth gathering participants that are going to New Orleans this summer. We will be meeting 6 to 7.30 in the youth room. Uh, parents are not needed at that meeting tonight. And then uh, for the youth chat today after church, uh, we will be meeting in the fellowship hall. Uh, the Unclubber book group is finishing up in the youth room today, so we will be in fellowship hall to start out. Thanks. Uh, parents who are meeting with me for the parent chat, we will find a room back in the education wing. So it's not too hard to find. So yes, Flo. Absolutely. For those of you who belong to the book club, or even if you do not, uh, and you have read The Maid and the Socialite, 
uh, which is a local author. Linda Drews wrote the book, and it's kind of a scandalous story of the Minahan family. <laughs> uh, but uh, she has done walking tours uh, to visit, or not to visit the places, but to go by the places that are mentioned in the book. And it's about a two-mile walk. Uh, and she has scheduled various walks throughout the summer months. Uh, I have talked to her, and she is going to arrange a tour, a walking tour, either June 2nd or June 9th. And we're kind of hoping it's going to be the second. She had some conflict with a wedding or graduation or something, and she wasn't sure of the date. So, uh, and I'm hoping she gets back to me this week on the exact date. That is a Sunday. It will be at noon, either day. Um, and they sell out very, very fast. So once the announcement of the time and date comes out, be prepared to sign up quickly if you're interested in going. Thank you. Thank you, Flo. I didn't know that the Minahan family was scandalous. I mean, I just, I, I will have to check that out. That sound, it sounds good. All I know is that he survived the Titanic and he's buried out in the cemetery with less scandalous people like Austin Straubel and Dick Baumgarten. So, oh, that's the, okay, all right. Not the scan that's not the scandalous guy. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, another uh, announcement uh, that uh, um, this Wednesday, uh, April 10th at 7 o'clock, right here in this space, we will be showing uh, the feature film Bonhoeffer, Agent of Grace. Uh, tomorrow is the anniversary of his execution by the Nazi regime for his uh, his work as a pastor and his work as a covert agent uh, in Nazi Germany. Uh, it's a really uh, remarkable story uh, of a life of struggling to live ethically and struggling to live out uh, a, a real witness to the faith of Jesus Christ. So, uh, 7 o'clock, everybody is invited. Ed, uh, for those who are confirmation students, that is our confirmation class this week. Your parents are more than welcome to attend with you. I hope that they will. Um, that's really all I've got that's definitive, but I do want to share this. A um, couple of things that we've got going on in the life of the congregation that you'll be hearing more about in weeks ahead. Um, a couple of times, some of you may have seen a handful of students from St. Norbert College uh, in worship with us. They are taking Dr. Craig Ford's Black Theology class, and they have a project that they have to do in our midst about how we as a congregation uh, can better live into our identity as Christians, uh, knocking down walls that separate humans from one another, and uh, I'm not going to give a whole lot of details about what they want to do. I'm going to let them do that, but uh, keep your eye out because they will be doing that within the next couple of weeks. Also related to that kind of work, um, for almost a year now, we well, at least this school year, we have had a, a team of members of the congregation uh, who are... Um, their work is to prepare St. John Lutheran Church to be a reconciling in Christ congregation, uh, meaning that we are open and inclusive to anybody and everybody who comes through our door and that no ministry opportunity that we engage in is closed off to anybody. Uh, they've been uh, meeting one-on-one -on -one with a lot of members of the congregation and one of the next steps, a uh, couple of the next steps that we've got coming up are talking as a Go, do you want to do you want to say anything? Okay, one we uh, one of the next steps is developing a welcoming statement. I'm not going to share it right now because it's still just a draft. But uh, they have started that work, and so my announcement is that I want everybody to hold that team in prayer as they continue that work. I think that it's really amazing what is happening there. So um, exciting movement within our congregation and our life together. That's, I wasn't, yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, with that, does anybody have any birthdays or anything else big in their life, like an anniversary? Yep. This 
this is the first time that Aaron gets to come up for a birthday blessing. How awesome is that? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we'll pray for mom and dad too. All right? Okay, let's say a word of prayer. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks that, you, that by your Holy Spirit you have called and gathered us to be your people. That through our lives together and our lives as individual saints, you're calling us to go out into your world to bear witness to the love of Jesus. And so today we pray your blessing on the members of our congregation who are celebrating, that they would be strengthened for that work. We give you thanks today for Werner, Julie, Terry, Aaron, and Carolyn. Bless them richly that they would be faithful in sharing your love and being bearers of your good news. We pray too for Ron and Shelley, for Scott and Jill, for David and Carrie. As they celebrate anniversaries, we pray that you would continue to strengthen and support them in their promises of love and faithfulness to one another. We pray that you would fill their hearts and their home with love and that they would see in one another the life-giving love you've given us in Jesus. It's in his beautiful name we pray. Amen. Happy anniversary, you two. So, well done. And I would say, like, go somewhere, but y'all just got back. So, you know, it's... <laughs> Aaron, happy birthday, dude. Y'all keep doing a good job with him, all right? <laughs> Anybody want to come up and help me with the blessing? Right. Oh, here, I'm going to turn that off. There we go. Come on up. Okay. And blessings go on ahead, so we put our hands out like this, okay? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In your, uh, now we make a big cross. Okay. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up, everybody. Let's stand up. We're going to sing our sending song, On Our Way Rejoicing.